Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. On today's episode of me talking about things, I'm just gonna be talking for a few minutes about the quote unquote edit that is prevalent in reality TV. Before I continue, link below are some surveys. There's the Last One Standing Season 4 survey and the Ladergados y Pilatos Excel survey. Now back to the edit. Now when I say the edit, I just mean the kind of view you see of someone during their time on a TV show. And this is just what you see on the TV show. This isn't their personality outside of the show. This is what the editors and producers want you to see kind of thing. And just the way someone acts and their story arc throughout a season or series or an episode. And I just wanted to bring it up because with... Last one standing, season three coming eventually, and Naked and Afraid season 18 coming, and hopefully some other spinoff seasons. I just wanted to talk about how what you see isn't always the truth, because based on what you see on a TV show, you think that's what a person's whole personality is. And it's not necessarily true, because I've seen a lot of interviews with contestants from America's Next Top Model. And, you know, when you watch them on the show, you're like, oh, that person's really mean. I don't like them. Look at that attitude. But then you see them in these interviews and you see the real them and you're like, oh, that's not really them. They were just portrayed in a certain way. And I'm saying that because Last One Standing has kind of brought out the worst in the fandom a little bit because people are seeing stuff happening with like a competition or when people are really hungry or arguments people had and they're like, this is exactly who this person is. And that's not necessarily true. The producers and editors want to get an emotional response from the audience because the more emotions you have, the more likely you are to watch, the more you're going to root for your favorites. You're going to want to go against your least favorites. And I I just want to say also, do not send hate to these survivalists. This is a highly edited TV show. And yes, sometimes they say what they say and sometimes they garner criticism. But when there are thousands upon thousands of people watching these shows and having a similar reaction and messaging these people and saying horrible, horrible things, that's not okay. So just leave them alone. Don't be rude. Don't send hate and there are consequences to your actions that may happen, but just be nice. But going back to the edit, yes, a lot of the times, you know, you said what you said kind of thing, but a lot of times context could be edited out where there could be a talk that the survivalist might have had before or after that may have made them more angry or they're like, hey, I got my emotions out, so I'm over it. Or the editors may choose the... 12 times during the 21 days that the person was upset or annoyed and put that in. But it's like, you know, there are a lot of emotions that are felt and the editors have to take up to 520 hours when it's a 21 day challenge and edit it down to like 45 minutes to two-ish hours. So the producers and editors have to say, okay, what did we see the most of during this challenge that we can weave a storyline? Can we get some of their backstory? And there is some responsibility placed on the survivalists because, you know, you said what you said. This is what you gave them for the majority of the challenge that they picked out. But there are some times where, you know, you're hungry. It's a moment of weakness. They're not like that all the time. So you have all these different factors that come in. And I know it seems like I'm flip-flopping between, oh, the producers do this and the survivalists do that. And it's just the survivalists, no matter their edit, will always be the ones taking the heat for what they say and do when there might be certain context cut out that could explain things and make people go, oh. Because, for example, Shane, on the first episode of Naked and Afraid, he was kind of portrayed as being kind of whiny and mean. But what they cut out was the fact that he broke three toes during his time on the challenge, and maybe that's why he was upset. And also, there are some things that are cut out, such as a survivalist maybe catching more food than what is shown. So it's like, oh no, they're starving. Oh, are they going to make it to the end? And this, some of the survivalists are like, yeah, I was able to find food. We were able to find it at different locations. We weren't as hungry as portrayed or we were more successful than what was shown. And so 
some individuals might take that as, oh, all you did was sit around all day. You were lazy. Why didn't you go do this? And why didn't you do that? And some of the times those survivalists are like, I did do that and I was successful or I did do that and it didn't work. So I had to move on to something else. So it's just a lot of making sure you're aware that certain things could be happening that you're not seeing. So let's not attack these individuals because there have been many a survivalist who you see them on social media and they teach survival and they know what they're doing. But then on the show, it looks like they're sitting around or failing the whole time and people are discrediting them based on what they see on the show. And it's like, but that's not really what you saw. You have to understand that there has to be a narrative that forms with this person. And sometimes if the narrative is too complex, then the editors may not be able to show everything because it's like, oh, this person did this, this person did this, this was successful, this was successful, this was not. You can't show all that in around an hour of screen time because I noticed that, you know, the first 10 minutes are dedicated to day one. So you have 30 to, you know, 60 minutes to get all the other days in there. And then there's the edit where if someone taps early, half the episode is dedicated to the interaction that the two survivalists have. And then one of them goes home and we basically have to speed run through the rest of the days. And so they're not able to show, oh, this person was successful in this. And they do know what they're doing. They're not just sitting around the whole time. And you may also get what's called Franken sentences, where the editors chop up specific things and put it all together. And the way they cut around this is you may get a talking head, but then the scene cuts away to the survivalist or their partner doing something, and then it cuts back. And maybe during the cutaway part, they added a different sentence in. Or there are times where the survivalist has a sentence and then the next sentence it sounds like the audio is a little bit different but sometimes they redub lines where maybe if there was a point where they weren't able to get good audio they have the survivalist re-say that line so that they could get it more clearly but there are sometimes someone might say oh i went fishing and it was annoying because the fish were not being caught or because the hooks were doing this and then they might say oh my partner you know they're not doing much right now because they're resting but they may cut that up to my partner is annoying because they're not doing much right now and there might be some context cut out and also there are times when you hear survivalists saying the same thing over and over again but remember that the producers are asking them questions they're not saying the same sentences over and over again unprompted and they may just take the same audio and put it back in and you might get someone saying the same thing over and over again and it's the exact same audio so they may have said it once or twice but the edit is making it seem like it was done over and over again and we never really hear the producers question so they may be like what's it like doing this what's it like doing that and so they answer that and during the 21 days they're there they may have been asked six or seven times so that's what you get and you know this five minute segment in a 45 minute show it's like oh my gosh they keep saying it when there are hundreds of more hours of them doing other things but you know they want to create that narrative they want to get that story arc within you they want to narrow it down and make it interesting to make the show and also people need to understand that these challenges are not easy they're in the wilderness they are affected by temperatures differently than normal people because they're out with barely anything to cover up from the cold. They have to make their own fire. They have to get their own food. So, you know, emotions are heightened and people may not act in the same way. Not everyone is going to be a saint all day, every day, and not everyone's going to be a raging monster all day, every day. But, you know, there can be a lot of complaining coming out of it. If you're like, oh my gosh, you were so whiny. And it's like, but you only saw like, 20 minutes of whining while they were out there for over 500 hours so it's just you know just don't be mean just take what you see with a grain of salt what you see isn't always the truth and be nice because I feel as though there are some survivors who get hate years after we see them on tv for example Trish and Amber many people hate Trish after well I say hey but majorly dislike Trish after her edit on XL8 and all the survivalists were like we know Trish we've interacted with Trish we've been on challenges with Trish a lot of them are saying hey she's not 
a horrible person like you think she is based off of an edit of a TV show, but people online are still like, I don't like her, she's lazy, she's... And it's just... And it's just interesting to see the way people will find excuses to just dislike someone, and it's like, okay, but when people who know her and have interacted with her are saying, hey, she's not a bad person, she does do her fair share of the work, then it's like... Let's not send hate. And I know I was critical of Trish during Last One Standing, but again, she said what she said. Or the edit showed her having a problem with Dan, but I didn't see that much of a problem going on kind of thing, but her feelings are her feelings and her feelings are valid. And I'm just saying my response, but I don't hate Trish, but I didn't want to fall for that edit that they had. But I don't know. It's a lot of... Just, you know, they said what they said, but this isn't their whole personality. So just take everything with a grain of salt. Please do not send hate. And keep that in mind when we go into Last One Standing Season 3, because I know Matt, his edit during Season 1 of Last One Standing made people dislike him. And everything he did previously was completely wiped away for some reason. And so, you know, be nice. Don't let five minutes change your perception of someone unless they do something really, really terrible or say something really, really terrible. And then if we were shown what was shown, it would be interesting. But you know, I think I've said too much or I've said too little, but yeah, be nice. That's the whole point of this. Be nice, don't be rude and take everything with a grain of salt. And with that, that is the end of the video. Thank you all so much for listening. Please like, comment, nice things and subscribe and click the next video if it's mine. Thank you, bye-bye.